Hello guys, Craig from Fix It Fellows and summer has finally arrived here in the UK at long last and if it's summer it's cycling time right? Now I've been cycling on and off for the last 15 years and my current ride is a Ribble R872 yeah R872 and I've had that bike for nearly 10 years 10 years is a long time to only have had one bike so I'm kind of thinking it's time for a new bike so if I want a new bike I must know what I want right? And I certainly do. What I want is a full modern build. I want it to be fully aero. I want hydraulic disc brakes. I want full integration, no visible cables, no visible wiring anywhere at all. I want 12 speed gears and the gears I want to be electronic. Yeah, full carbon. I want everything. I want a modern build. And the real crux of it is I want to do it all for less than 1800 pounds. So, here it is. Right, okay, so what do we have here? In the big box, we have the frame, forks, handlebars, seat post, bottom bracket, through axles, all come as one package. In here, as the name suggests, we have the wheels. Elite wheels, uh, Chinese brand. And in here is everything else I need. Crank, pedals, group set, shifters, brakes, chain, saddle, tires. That is a complete bike right there. So let's crack on, get it out, and then let's put this thing together. So there it is, all unpackaged. Yeah, that is what you get for your money. So you get the aero frame, which comes with a T40 bottom bracket comes with the through axles also for front fork there everything uh, aero and integrated you get your headset assembly bearings seat post clamp with cover and then on the seat post itself you know very aero you have this gritted rough surface there to enable good clamping in there so you shouldn't get any slippage. Likewise, with the aero integrated handlebars and stem, you have a rough gritted surface where your shifters attach. So again, there shouldn't be any slipping or anything there. You have attachments under there should you want a um, computer mount to attach. As you can see, you've got all of the entry and exit points for your piping and cabling. I went for a hundred mil reach on the stem fork you got the hole down there for your hydraulic line to go for your brake um, that emerges just there mounting points for the brake caliper and as i say through axle there yeah you get all of that um, depending on what deal they're running at any given time on aliexpress and the import duty relevant to your territory but i paid just shy of 450 sterling for all of that Okay, right, moving on from the frame, we come to the wheel set. And I'll say I've gone for these elite 50 mil profile carbon. And yeah, they come with pillar cloaks. I've gone for scent lock discs as opposed to six bolt discs. And I've opted for the Shimano free, free hub. Okay, so they are straight pull spokes on the, on the hubs. They have a very definite hook under there for your tires yeah all very nice and neat and clean and there's the front one same setup okay some nice discrete graphics but you can if you want have white graphics and it comes with a roll of rim tape now these were quoted as being 1672 give or take a few grams here or there in weight combined yeah, I've weighed them and they come in spot on. So yeah, very, very pleased with these so far. Everything looks great. Can't wait to get them on the bike. Right, so what else are we going for? So saddle-wise, we're going tried and tested. I've been riding a uh, Celia Italia saddle um, on the Ribble for some time. Uh, this is an SLR Superflow. So we've just got the current version of that. So I'm happy with that. Pedals. Going for Shimano Altegra SPDs. I've been riding the slightly lower version of these on the Ribble, um, so I've upgraded to the Altegra. Tires going for the De Rigueur Continental GP5000s. 
got these from Merlin Cycles. The tyres actually come with some complimentary inner tubes, but I shall be using the TPUs, which I've been riding on my Ribble. You've seen a video I've done. I'm quite smitten by them. You save a huge amount of weight. I've not had any trouble with them whatsoever. So, yeah, won't be using these. I'll be using the TPUs. And what's this? Oh, yeah, I've got some piping here. This will deaden any sound that you may get from the hydraulic hose as it goes down through the frame. So you put it over your hydraulic hose, thread this down through the frame. Uh, just a bit of sound deadening so you don't get any rattles or knocks from your hose that goes to your rear brake. Okay, yeah, I've just got myself a tool here for trimming down the hydraulic hoses. Um, something I didn't have, I always sort of made do with other tools in the garage, but that's a specific tool. As for a chain, uh, always go to minor Altegra. Got this from Merlin Cycles. Crank. Been riding Altegra 6800 on the Ribble, so I've upgraded to the current Altegra 12 speed and I opted for 175 length arm. Well, I'm just sticking to what I know. Currently I ride a 175. I know there's a current fad to go for shorter arms but uh, I'm quite happy with my 175 so that's what I've gone with. So cassette again gone Altegra. This is a 34 tooth to 11 tooth. Um, it's the biggest cassette I've ever ridden on a road bike. I shall see how I get on with that. I think I might currently have a 28 tooth possibly on my current road bike. So 34 is a quite a big jump up. We'll see how we get on with it. Okay, bar tape, always use uh, Dida. Currently ride it on the Ribble. I'll be putting Dida on this bike. Uh, for discs, I've gone 160 front, 140 back. These are Z Race. Front one has uh, cooling on it, the back one doesn't. Not entirely sure whether cooling is really required. But anyway, yep, that's what I've gone for. Center lock. Okay, as for chain rings, again, obviously Altegra to go with the Altegra crank, crank. And I've gone for 52 large, 36 small. I have been riding a compact on the Ribble. So a bit of a gamble for me going up to 52 on the main chain, on the big gear. We'll see how we get on. Okay, now the biggest gamble I'm taking on this bike and the biggest departure from what I've done before is that I'm not going Shimano for the shifters and brakes. I am actually going with the L2 ERX electronic group set. So these are a 12 speed group set, two buttons on each lever up and down there, wireless. Um, you have a battery pack that goes in the seat tube. So the battery connects by wire to the front and rear derailleurs, but the derailleurs communicate to one another wirelessly and connect to the shifters wirelessly. Um, seen lots of reviews, pretty good thing. Some of the early pre-sale items that were available to some reviewers had a few little issues, but I'm um, hoping that they have all since been resolved. And at the price point at which you can now buy these, um, these are definitely worth a punt, as they say. So, you know, that's the shifter. And then obviously you've got the multitude of other bits in here, the calipers and the rear derailleur, etc., etc. So... All that remains to be done now is to get this little lot put on the frame and get out and ride the thing. Right, okay, let's crack on with this. I've got the bike frame in the stand. I know it's not ideal to use it on the top tube, especially with carbon frames, but um, I've got that clamp quite gently. Um, it's not feasible to clamp it to the seat post tube there. And um, I can't put the seat post in as yet to clamp it to the seat post because I need to put the battery pack in there for the shifters. So anyway, um, with regards to the bottom bracket, I think I referred to it as a T40 earlier. It's actually a T47. I was hoping that my trusty Shimano bottom bracket tool would actually fit. It is 16 tooth, same as this, but it is of a different dimension. So we'll have to get another tool to tighten this up properly. Um, and the other thing I am um, missing is some grommets to go in the frame here and also here at the back. So I just need to get some like DI2 style grommet, rubber grommets to go in there. So I'll get those ordered and they can be coming. In the meantime, um, it's time to think about connecting up the forks to the frame. Um, but before I even do that, what I want to do is put the rear uh, brake caliper on, thread the hydraulic line through the frame because the hose um, does uh, sort of interact with the uh, steerer tube of the forks and the headset etc so it'd be good to have those in situ before you put the forks on.
Right, okay, here we are with the L2. Uh, this is the rear caliper, so it comes all pre hose installed. Um, it's all got fluid in it. Um, it comes with this rather neat little thing at the end, so that plugs the line so the oil can't come out. And what that allows you to do is to thread a standard brake, um, not brake gear, uh, cable through your frame, and then the lug at the end of the cable can fit into that little metal contraption there and you can pull your hose through so that's quite a nice little touch all comes as standard um, yep yeah, so they come loaded with a set of um, pads in there the pads have these cooling metal plates attached to them now these are the first generation of L2 brakes so they're a two piece I'm led to believe the second generation is a one piece unit and yeah so this one looks like it's dated April uh, sorry the 4th of December 23 so I'm hoping that's quite late in the production run of this first generation of brake um, yeah it also comes with a little insert there to stop the pads from uh, being squeezed together inadvertently during installation so it's all very well thought through um, in the package you get a selection of connectors so it's a bit like on a mountain bike where you have different adapters depending on the size of what uh, rotors you're running so you've got the option of 160 and 140 for the front and the same there for the rear okay so it isn't a direct mount to the frame as I believe that might actually be a Shimano pattern so they've had to use these adapters there then you get a whole range of hardware um, so a multitude of fixing bolts depending on the length you need so from long right the way down to short you also get a couple of spare um, olive uh, clamp bolts there for the lever end and you also get a couple of spare hose inserts and olives so overall pretty pretty good so I've just got to pick the right clamp uh, adapter plate there to mount this to the rear fork of the frame so I'm going 140 so we'll give this one a go Right, okay, so I've attached the appropriate adapter to there. It's not done up super tight yet. It's just because um, that, that can be adjusted once we get the wheel and the disc in place. Now we can take our rear caliper and we can thread the pipe through the frame. So in it goes. You just start pushing it through. Let's uncoil the hose a little bit okay now I've taken the liberty of taking out the bottom bracket from here so that I can look for the hose and I can already see it there now all I need to do is guide that hose up through the down tube to the headset area And there it is. Okay. So we'll just push it through. And now we can bolt our caliper to our adapter. Okay, again, so don't have to do these up fully tight because <clears throat> we need the adjustments um, to be made once we've got the wheel in place. Okay, right now I'm going to take some of my insulating rubber hose and pass it over the hydraulic hose line down through the frame. So I'm just going to cut it to an appropriate length. I'm going to see whether I can get it beyond the bottom bracket, maybe into the first bit of the fork stanchion there and up to sort of the headset area. So about that approximate sort of length. So I'm just going to cut that off there and then just thread it through. Okay, so it sits nice and high up there. I've got a huge sort of cavity inside here with the way this frame has been formed. So it's high up there, out of the way. It'll be out of the way of the rotating crank. Now, okay, so here we are with the battery pack that comes with the L2 uh, shifters. So it's very similar to the Shimano Di2 battery. It's designed primarily with the idea of it going inside the seat post tube. Now, the issue I've got is that I've gone for a very aero frame. And 
this is actually just uh, a bit bigger than 17 mil. I think Shimano claim theirs is 17 mil. I've never actually got hold of one to put a, a vernier caliper on it, but this is just a little bit more than 17 mil and it doesn't fit inside that seat post or come to think of it, it won't even fit inside the seat post tube on the frame. So I have a, had a bit of an issue. I sat back and I scratched my head for a little while and I think I've come up with a plan. We have this large cavity here. So initially I thought possibly if I take out the bottom bracket, I could push it in there somehow. It does not fit, um, it won't go in there. However, what I can do is I can offer it in through the steerer tube hole here in the headset and have the battery positioned here or even here. But this position here, if I was to put it up through from here and locate inside there, might just be at the extreme um, length of the cable that is provided to go from the battery to the rear derailleur. So I think the best option um, would be to drop it down here and have it positioned here. Now I do have some slight concerns about um, it hitting this uh, metal part of the frame here because there's a metal insert here for the bottom bracket to screw in. It's cut away considerably, it's just got a, a plate across the bottom that joins the two shells together. But you know it's a relatively sharp edge so I will have to package this in something um, to protect it inside the frame. Also, um, it's not quite as super accessible as being in the seat post tube because obviously if it's in there and then you've got your forks in place and your hydraulic line and everything in place, this area without a bit of effort is not accessible. But anyway, once it's in, it shouldn't be an issue because um, you don't actually have to get to this battery to charge it. You charge by connecting to the rear derailleur. So um, what I need to do is have a little think about how to package this. Um, in order to drop it down in there. I will probably attach a cable to it somehow so that if needs be I can fish down there, hook onto the cable and be able to pull it back out. That seems a prudent idea to me. So yeah, I think that's the only way we're going to get this to work because I certainly don't want to have it externally anywhere because that would absolutely ruin the whole point of this aero bike with no external cables or hoses. So fingers crossed. That will work. Right, okay, so let's get this battery for the gear shifters into the frame. I've wrapped it in some of the foam that came with the frame just to protect it a bit. And I've also attached a bit of cord on it so that in the event, once it's in the frame, I can fish down there, hook onto the hook, uh, cord and pull it out. Um, also the battery, uh, the wires connect to the top end there. I kind of want the battery to sit that way with the plugs at this end rather than the plugs being at that end and maybe interfering with the crank rotation and getting damaged. So they're gonna, it's going to sit that way. Um, so I'm going to have to drop the wires that connect to the two derailleurs into the frame first and fish them out of this hole here, have them hanging out here then once everything's in place, I can then move them on to their respective positions. Now, in order to get these Kaya, these two wires through, I've just used a bit of the off cut of that um, insulation foam tubing that I've got, poked the two wires in at that end, and then if I pull that through, you can see it's taking the cables down with it. Okay, so there they emerge. And now I can offer in the battery. Now because the battery is a bit fatter now with all the wrapping I put around it and the inside of the frame isn't super smooth, you know, it is going to, it's going to take a little bit of manipulation. So anyway, in we go. And there we are, the battery is just sitting there like that. But the battery is in the tube, it's in the frame. Now we can forward 
these two respective wires on. So the shorter one I'll have going to the front derailleur. So that's this hole here. So we can just offer it in to there. And there it is. Now this one will run through here and out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to poke through a cable through there, attach this to the fishing line and pull it back through. Right, okay, now to get this cable uh, through that goes to the rear derailleur, what I've done is I've passed a brake cable through from this end, so it's come out of there, and I've attached both of them together. Now, the complexity is, is you only get quite a small hole at this end, so you don't want a big junction between the cable you're trying to pull through and the cable you're using to pull through. In an ideal world, we'd have passed the um, wire for the derailleur through that way because it pushes through nicely, but because we're having to mount the battery in there, it made it a bit difficult to then connect it at that end. So anyway, we'll try this. Let's pull that back through. Just do it nice and gently, and there it's through comes out that end okay so we've got all our cables in the batches are installed I think we might have cracked it right as you can see I'm back in the garage and the reason for that is the great British summer it's just not playing ball I would have loved to have filmed this entire build in my garden but it's just not going to be possible so let's crack on with it um, I was talking about needing to get a replacement bottom bracket and some frame grommets well, those bits have arrived in the intervening time, so let's have a look. Right, okay, so here we are. Um, there's the bottom bracket that came with the bike frame, as you can see, uh, the outboard cups, but with nothing in between. So my battery would have rubbed on the crank spindle. So I've gone for this. This is, uh, you know, the same sort of bottom bracket, except it has a shield in the middle. So that hopefully, well, I say hopefully it won't, will it? Nothing will rub on the crank as it passes through. Uh, also come with a spanner, so that's good to go. And then also got these little frame grommets. Let's move on. Right, so for the next bit, I shall be putting on the rear and front derailers. And that is in uh, so that I can get my cable lengths correct. So this is the L2 ERX electronic shifting set. And you see you have a, a carbon cage on there. Look pretty, pretty nice. So let's get these on the bike. Right, okay, let's start with the rear derailleur first. Um, just gonna put a little bit of uh, grease on these threads. And I'm using this uh, stuff from Fast Freddy's, high performance multi-purpose grease. Don't need a lot of it, just, just a little tap tap. So, just going to take a little bit on the end of the screwdriver and just wipe it onto the early part of the thread and then that will get smeared around as the threads go in. So, take our Allen key and offer it up to the hanger on the frame. Need to make sure that the little uh, notch or knob nib on the back of the actual derailleur goes to the protrusion on the hanger there. So let's offer that in nice and gently at first so that we ensure that we engage our threads properly. Very fine threads on these, a little bit tricky. There we go, and they're home. Get that in there. Okay, now there is a torque setting on there between 10 and 12 nanometers so just using my torque uh, wrench here i've got it set to 10 so let's offer that on there we go so that's the rear derailleur on now to do the front so let's take out the bolt and the washer there let's just Put a tiny little bit of grease on these threads as well. Okay, put that down for a moment. And also, I am going to put in the plug for the derailleur. Now, on these L2s, the plug has a tiny little notch on the inside that marries up with a notch on the unit there. 
So you just have to make sure you get them lined up. So you offer it in and twist it until you feel the notch engage like that and then push it home. Okay, so there's the cable in like so. We can then take the nut and the washer, offer it up to the hanger on the frame. And there it is on the bike. Now there's no point tightening it up uh, at the moment super tight because we need to adjust it for the crank and the chain ring that I'm using. This is uh, really in order to get the cable in the right position. So I'm going to pull through the excess like so. And then likewise with the rear derailleur I shall do the same. Let's get that plug in again marrying up the notch. So just offer it on and twist it around until you feel the notch engage and then push it home. Okay, and we can then pass the excess cable through. Okay, so there's the excess cable from the rear derailleur. So you need to make sure you leave some excess on the outside because of the movement of the derailleur. You don't want this cable here so tight that it puts strains on the plug. And again, likewise with the front one, we uh, need a bit of excess. So let's get these grommets on. So there you see, there's the grommet. They come actually already sliced so that they can be passed around the cable and put into the frame. So let's get this on. There we go. So we just offer it around the cable like so, and then just slide it down into the frame. There you go, nice and neat. It's exactly the same for the rear one. Okay, so now before I go any further, it's time to get the shifters and make sure these are all working okay. Right, here we are with the shifters. Um, they're all wired up and integrated and binded, whatever you want to say. So let's do the front. There we go, and the back. Okay, so it's all working okay. I can now tidy up these cables and get that bottom bracket in. Right, okay, so now for the bottom bracket, I have pushed all the wires in up and out of the way. I've put the left hand side uh, bottom bracket cut in already you don't need to see that going in but what I've done is I put a little bit of that uh, glass freddies performance grease around the threads to go in there but first of all I need to offer in the like little cage bit so making sure everything's out of the way just hold it out of the way with my finger there let's just pass that through and put that in okay so now nothing will sit against the rotating spindle of the crank i can now offer in the uh, cup from this side careful not to cross thread it make those threads to engage they are a little bit tricky at times. There we go, that's in. So I'm just going to put it in and turn it back and forth a bit just to get that grease engaging. You can see the excess grease just starting to uh, bulge out a bit. I'll wipe that off before I fully close up the bottom bracket. Okay, get that nicely worked in there. Make sure that the cage thing's all lined up, and it is. Okay, now I'm just going to take a bit of tissue and wipe away that excess. Because any excess grease down there will just be a magnet for dust and grime. Let's get it off. Thanks. Turn it in finally. Another little wipe around. Get it finger tight. Finally with the tool. There we are. The bottom bracket is in.
Right, okay, now time to build the crank up. So let's take our chain ring. I've gone for a 52 tooth, and you'll notice on your chain ring that you'll have a little notch sticking out there. That's a chain catcher to stop it going down uh, behind the crank arm. But that little notch should line up with your crank arm. So you take your crank, off it in the spindle through the hole diagonally like that, push the, the uh, spider through so that effectively the spider is now behind the chain ring and then just position the crank in uh, chain ring and crank together like that. So as we turn it over the spider sits over the threaded portion of the chain ring and as I mentioned you can see there that the notch to stop the chain going down between the chain ring and the arm is positioned by the, the arm there. So okay, that's there like that. We can now take our small chain ring, which I believe is a 36. Okay, it is sided. Um, you'll notice on the holes where the bolts go through that there is a recess. Now that is the side that we want uh, showing up to us at this point. And again, there's another little notch there in exactly the same position as the notch on the main chain ring so that goes where the uh, crank arm is. So we'll offer that down onto position. Okay, we then take our bolts and start placing them in. Now you don't do these up fully tight until they're all in because the actual heads of the bolts um, position the chain rings in place and they recess down into the rebates. Okay, so as I said, it's, it's vitally important that you make sure you get the heads of these bolts into the recesses on the small chain ring. If you don't do that, then the bolts don't go in completely and you will have a rattly crank. Um, so yeah, most important that you get these button headed bolts properly located into those chain rings. Right, okay, so these uh, chain ring bolts, according to Shimano, should be tightened between 12 and 16 nm. So I'm gonna do them to 12. It's actually a Torx bit. I mean, I was using a hex uh, allen key there which worked perfectly fine but um, on a closer inspection they are actually torx bolts so let's get that in there and okay that's that one done let's do the adjacent one okay so i was there or thereabouts okay and the final one okay so they're all torqued up when we put this on the bike and we offer on the left hand crank arm there is a plastic bolt that goes in there you do it up by hand and that should be between uh, half and one and a half nanometers so just hand tight that's not critical and then we'll sort out the bolts for the crank arm as we do it okay now we can look about getting it on the bike. So there we are. Crank is all on. Front derailleur's on. Rear derailleur's on. When we come around here, you can see we have the drive side crank arm on. As I said, the centre nut there is done up by hand, basically to a maximum of one and a half newton meters. Uh, so it's basically finger tight. And then the lock bolts here and here get done up gradually one by one to uh, a rating of between 12 and 14 nanometers so that's all done I think it's time for a cup of tea right okay so now the next thing to do is to look to install the forks so first thing to do with that is to attach the uh, hydraulic brake caliper exactly the same setup as the one at the back 
So what I've done, I've selected the appropriate bracket from the uh, assortment of fixings that come with the L2 set. So I've opted for this, this bracket here, it's front for 160 disc and selected the appropriate uh, screws hardware. So now what I need to do is take the hose and thread it up through the fork so it comes out there and then we can look to attach it to there. Right, okay, let's attach this bracket to there. So it tells you which way is up. So that goes on like that. Take the two fittings, the two bolts. These are these ones here are actually Torx T25s. So let's get that one into there. Okay, so now we can take the caliper and pass the hose up through the fork there. So then it comes out the steerer tube. Now, as I said before, L2 do this great thing where they put these attachments on the end. So if needs be, you can put a uh, gear cable down through the hole and then the um, nipple on the end of the cable attaches into here so you can pull things through if you have any resistance. So let's offer this in. And it's going up. And then we look to see it come out the other end. And there it and there it comes. Pass it through. Now these hoses are quite stiff so they have a kind of predefined coil on them so sometimes you do fight that a little bit okay so we now attach the caliper to the bracket and these are hex bolts as opposed to torx there's one in there's the other. So the final adjustment will be done once the wheel and disc are in place. For the time being, let's just get that on there secured so it doesn't move around too much. Like so. And there is our brake caliper on the fork. Okay, so these are the two bearings. One goes at the bottom, one at the top for the headset. And I'm just, uh, I'm not greasing them to lube up the bearing itself. I'm just going to rub some grease on my fingers and smear it around the stainless steel parts just to give it some extra um, weather protection. So let's just um, take a bit of that and just smear it around. Not excessive amounts, but just to put a smear of grease all the way around the stainless steel. So that's that one done. And then this one as well. Okay. Right, okay, so I've inserted the forks up through the frame. Um, bearing there, bearing there, and I've put on the uh, headset assembly as that come with the bike. The other thing I've done is at the moment I've put the stem, uh, the forks in, and I've clamped the stem at the top there to stop it from falling out. And then in order to stop it falling out completely and rotating, I've just put a couple of tire straps around the frame and underneath the fork so that kind of locks the fork in place. Now this bike came with three spacers, they kind of interlock like so. Uh, and the reason I'm using all three um, is because the bike shipped with three, the steerer tube length is set to those three uh, spacers. So when I put the handlebars on there and put the uh, stem plug down in there, that will all work based on those three spacers. And I want to build the bike at that height because once I feed the hydraulic lines through the integrated handlebars, 
and trim them off at the shifters. Um, they will effectively be at the longest length they'll ever be. If I subsequently decide to lower the handlebars down by removing some of these uh, spacers here, I'll just have to trim down the lines a little bit if I can't push the slack into the frame. Probably could do it with the rear one because there's a bit of uh, capacity for slack down there, but not so much with the front brake. So my reckoning is build the bike with the highest stack and the longest lines. And then I can always work backwards from there as opposed to slamming the handlebars down, cutting the lines to that length and then realizing, actually, I don't want it slammed down that light low and putting the spacers back in only to find the lines ain't long enough anymore. OK, because then you've got to replace all the lines. So, yeah, it's just a practical thing. I can take that clamp away now. Right. So now I can look to feed these lines through so I've got the back line and the front brake line and they need to go in through a hole here in the handlebar and then be passed out to the respective brake levers shifters um, unfortunately with these uh, L2 brake lines they've kindly put on some little nipples at the top there where a uh, gear lever line can fit in. So you can hook a gear lever in there, pass your gear levers in through there and then pull them through. So yeah, I'm gonna crack on with that. Right, okay, so I've got a gear shifter cable here and I'm just gonna pass it through the nipple on the end of the hydraulic line. Okay, pull all the slack through like so. And then we can look to pass that through the handlebar stem assembly. Now, I'm working on the shorter hose. That is the hose to the front brake. Now I want my brake, front brake on my right hand. Now this might sound silly, but I've actually put some tape around the handlebar there to remind me that's where I want to pass the cable from too, because trust me, from experience, I know you get this wrong. I have actually passed it through to the wrong side several times already. I don't want to do it again. So sellotape or some sort of way to indicate that's the side you're going for because you spin the bar around like that and you start getting confused about your lefts and rights. So anyway, right, let's pass this cable into the first opening there until we see it down in the second opening there. And then we can get our long nose pliers and reach down and put it out. like so, put all that slack through and now what we're going to do is pass it towards the taped side okay so again we pass it through until we see it there it is it's actually come straight through of its own accord which makes life a little easier and let's pull that slack through and now we can, by a process of pushing the hose and pulling the cable, we can work that hose line through. So let's push it in the way, pull the slack, push it, pull it, push it, pull it, and so forth. And there it is, it's just emerging. Okay, you don't want to push so much through that your handlebar wants to be really close to the stem because then you're going to have trouble trying to get this one through. So you, you want to just give yourself a little bit of slack there to play with. We can always pull the rest through in a minute. So let's pull that cable out, attach the cable to the rear hose. Now I warn you, you do end up ruining these cables. These are sacrificial. Let like you see, it's starting to unwind. That will be a pig to put it on the back on a bike. Sacrificing a gear line is a small price to pay for the fact that this makes the job infinitely more easy. Okay, so once again, we pass the cable into the first bit. All right, that until we see it in the second opening. Reach for it with the pliers. like that and then pass it through towards the handlebar side that you want it to go to 
obviously if you get that wrong at this point when bearing in mind you've already got a hose coming outside if you end up trying to pass two hoses to that side well there's no hope for you is there so anyway there it is there i just need to reach in there with my pliers there we go pull the line through and then start pushing and pulling once again and there it comes so with these with the cable method it really isn't that difficult okay so we can take the cable out like that and now we can start looking to lower this all down onto the headset assembly so it's a case of just pushing the cable in pulling the slack pushing it in pulling the slack we've now got the handlebars onto the steerer tube and we can start pulling all of the slack through okay i think that's about it right at this point you want to make sure that your stack is all interlinked with those little nibs on the top of each spacer they interlock with the next and then on the bottom of your integrated stem handlebar there will be holes for the last spacer to lock into so when you turn your handlebar it turns the spacer headset assembly with it okay now then when you look down in there your steerer tube should be quite a way down inside i've actually got 10 mil there you probably least need at least five or six mil before you get to the steerer tube otherwise your steerer tube plug won't engage properly okay so here's my steerer plug tube that will go down in there so just going to make sure everything seems to be compressed as much as possible before i put that in okay so we'll drop that down in there and then i just need an allen key to start doing that up a bit right, here we go allen key let's start doing that up right i can feel that that's starting to bite now so as you do the allen key up it pulls a nut up on the bottom and then the uh, plug bit starts to expand a bit like a raw plug in a wall really so it starts to expand so as it expands it grips the inside of your steerer tube and then the more you do up the nut the top cap pushes down on the stem there and compresses it all together so let's do that so that feels okay-ish at the moment i can now take off these tie straps just got to unsnip those there's one off and there's the other off the good news is the forks didn't fall out so clearly that plug is doing something you can never really tell how much slack is in there until you get your wheels on and you put the thing on the ground and try and pull your front brake rock back and forwards and then you can feel any slop in there so for the time being that feels all right i'm just gonna nip up these uh, bolts on the stem there to just stop some of that rotation there do them up incrementally a little bit on the top one a little bit on the bottom one okay that will do for the moment so there we are there is the fork and headset assembly and the handlebars fitted um, seems to rotate okay Okay, now it comes to putting the saddle on the seat post so this is the saddle that i've opted for celery tally slr yep i've been riding the earlier version of this for the last well nearly 10 years and it's been very comfortable so i'm hoping this will be too now the seat post um, and clamp that comes with the bike allows for two different rail sizes so you've got 7.7 .7 and 7.9 um, i'm going to try it with the 7.7 .7 first so here goes
got both the upper and lower clamps around the rail of the seat. I can now lay the seat post back out the way and now it's a question of getting the wedge in place. So I'll offer it in from one side already on the Allen key there we are we can make the final adjustments on the bike at the moment this is set it kind of around about there does have a newton meter rating of six so we can set that properly once it's all on the bike right okay so there you go there's the seat post and seat attached together now we just need to take the uh, seat post lock and or clamp as I should say and this rubber grommet so the rubber grommet just goes over the seat post like so okay now I'm not going to put any of the uh, carbon grease on the seat post or the, the clamp as yet um, I'll see what it's like once I'm riding it to see whether I need any on there uh, as I said it's got quite a rough surface on the seat post tube there so we'll see how effective that is so that just drops into place And then the clamp just drops down in that front section there and does up. Like so, and then you just pull down the rubber cover, like so. Right, okay, so I've done the rim tape all the way around the rim. Um, and now I need to put a hole through for the valve. Now I'm not running tubeless, I am running um, TPU in the tubes, um, but nevertheless I still need to get a hole through for the valve. So that is where it needs to go there, and I will do this by heating up the end of this 7mm drill bit, and then just uh, pushing it through the grim tape. So let's heat this up. Needs a bit more heating up. And there we are. Hold is through. Now we just take a smaller drill bit and poke through the excess plastic on the other side. There we are. We have a nice neat hole for the valve. Right, okay, rim tape's done, valve hole's done. Now it's time to put my tyres on. My tyres of choice are these uh, GP5000 Continentals. So they're going to go on there along with my TP unit tubes. And the only other thing then to do is to put on the cassette. Don't need to show you doing any of that, that's just standard stuff, so I'll get that done and then I can get the wheels on the bike. Tyres are on both wheels, cassettes on, now it's just time to put the discs on. Okay, so on the front wheel we're going for this 160 centre lock. On, and then the locking nut goes on. Like so and then this Shimano bottom bracket tool. Does that up. 
So there we are. The front done. Okay, now for the back, we're going for 140 on the back. So again, we'll just push it on like so. Put the lock ring on. Fill it up with the Shimano tool. There we are. Bill's done. Time to get them on the bike. Right, so now having built, built up my wheel set, I'm going to get these on the bike um, and then that will enable me to get the bike down off of the stand and we can think about put, doing the shifters, putting the chain on and start fettling and fine tuning everything. Right, okay, now that I've got the wheels on the bike, I could feel that there is a bit of slop there in the headset. So I've taken the, uh, the plug back out and I've actually taken the cap off. Um, I put some carbon grit paste in there as well, inside the tube and around the outside of the steerer tube so that the stem can clamp around the steerer tube as well. Now the way these plugs work is that, as I said earlier, it's a bit like a raw plug in the wall. You can actually put an Allen key in there and that will pull that nut up and as you can see the clamps expand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the plug down into the steerer tube, push it down until it reaches the top of the steerer tube. Okay, so it's completely inside the stem handbar there. Okay, feels like everything is quite compressed. Now I'm going to do up that nut in there until I know it has properly clamped into the inside of the steerer tube. Okay, so this isn't compressing anything at the moment. This is just making sure that the plug is getting a really good solid grip on the inside of the steerer tube, okay? Like that. Now, I can take the top cap and bolt, pass that through like that, tighten it up, and what that will do is push the handlebars down onto the fork assembly and compress all of this. And hopefully that will take out all of the slack that I was experiencing. So what I like to do is I like to put my fingers on the shut lines between the fork and the frame and, then, and also the headset and you can just get a feel for how things are tightening up. So I can feel those gaps getting smaller. Okay, so that's a bit too tight at the moment, but there is no play. So let's just back that off a little bit. Right, that feels about right. Now I can do up these two bolts. And now we have slack free headset. Yep, no slack there at all anymore. Right, okay, so it's now time to start thinking about connecting up the hydraulic hoses to the shifters. So you saw earlier, I've passed the hose lines through the handlebars. I've now connected my shifter to the bar where I want it. I've pulled back the red rubber. Uh, boot to expose the connection point. So on these L2 shifters they come with uh, oil already installed and there's a, a plastic bung in the pipe there to keep the oil in so that will have to come out um, but also I need to cut down this hose to the right length. Put a uh, needle, olive and lock nut on in order to screw it all up. In order to do this work, I have purchased this kit off of AliExpress, inside which is this tool. So this tool will firstly chop the hose to the length I want it using this little blade on the side. You know, it's like a guillotine there. And once that's done, um, I will then be able to insert the hose into that clamp there place the needle in the end and then using this screw 
accurately and effectively push the needle into the end of the hose. Right, okay, so now it's time to decide what length to cut this hose. Uh, I know from the instructions manual on these L2 uh, shifters that the pipe needs to be able to insert into here 13 mil. Now what you don't want to do is pull, pull your hose through your handlebar right to the fullest extent and then cut it off there. Um, cut it off at the 13 mil mark against the side of the, uh, the barrel of the pipe there um, in case that's too short and then you've got no slack so I'd recommend just pushing some of it back into the handlebar so there's a bit of slack in there in the event you need to pull it forward okay so I'm going to go with about there I'm just going to put a bit of uh, tape around the hose in the approximate position of where I need it so that I can mark it. Just need to get myself a pen. So I'm going to go with approximately there. As I say, I can always pull some of the hose out of the handlebar. Okay. So having pulled the slack out, you can see it's considerably longer than it is needed, but I can push it into the required length. Right, so here goes. I'm going to take my cutter I'm going to place the hose into the cutter there on the side, lining it up there with my mark, as you can see, and then you just pull the guillotine bit down and squeeze it and bang, it's cut straight through. That's very, very easy. And as you can see, I can now take it back and line it up with the connector there, no problem. So the next thing to do is obviously take off the bit of tape and look to insert the needle in the end along with the olive and the lock nut. Right, okay, so these are the three components that we need to attach to the hose itself. This is the lock nut, this is the olive, and this is the needle. So the needle gets inserted into the tube, and that gives the end of the tube or the hose some strength and integrity and a solid end in which for the... Uh, connection to be made. The olive, if you've done any form of plumbing, you know an olive, what that will do is that will get squeezed and compressed and feel and create a uh, airtight liquid tight seal around the hose and the coupling. And the lock nut, well that applies the pressure to the olive in order to create the seal. So now it's very important I would say to put the lock nut on and the olive on over the hose before you insert the needle. The reason being is once you've insert the needle, it can uh, make the end of the hose expand ever so slightly and you may not get these items back over. So put the lock nut over first with the threads pointing towards the, the lever. Then place the olive over like so. Place, slide that up there out of the way. And now we can look to insert that needle in the end there, which we're going to utilize my new tool for. Right, so take the hose, slide the lock nut and the olive up out of the way, and insert the hose into this bit of the clamp there. Okay, and then do the clamp up. Okay, so the hose is in there nice and tight, and we will back off the needle press bit. We take our needle and we offer it onto the end of the needle press, like so. And then we just guide, we start doing it back up and we just guide the needle into the hole of the hose. So I've got the start of the needle up against the hose and I'm just starting to do up the, the, the press and I'm just doing it ever so slightly, make sure it's pushing it in, it's going in. Okay, if you haven't got this clamp done up tight enough it will push the hose out of the clamp. So, okay, so we're just doing it up and it's inserting it. In it goes. 
all the way in until the flange of the needle is up against the hose. There we go. So that's fully in. So we can back the press bit off. We can undo the clamp for the hose hold part. And there we are, there is our needle inserted into the hose. And just to illustrate, in this instance, the olive does come on off nice and easy, but uh, it, it doesn't always work that way. So now what we've got to do is we've got to take out the bung here out of the end of the shifter and we can connect this all together. Okay, so here comes the bung. Out it comes. You see, it's actually got a seal on it and everything and you can see there's quite a bit of oil on the end there. And now we just take our hose, get the hose, back it up and get it into So you can see some oil is coming out of the shifter. So these are pre-oiled. So let's make sure that that is pushed all the way home. The olive is gone in and then you just want to put a little bit of grease on the threads there. So I'm just putting a little bit of grease on those threads and that will get taken up along the threads. And now I'm just gently getting the threads of the lock nut to engage into the shifter threads, making sure I'm not cross threading. Just doing it up by hand first of all, guiding it in. all the way pushed in I'm just going to take a little gently with a pair of pliers just see if I can push in that hose anymore that's fully in and now I can look to just nip it up with the required spanners And there we are, there is one of the hoses connected. Now it's just a case of doing the same thing to the other side and then we can look about bleeding uh, any air out of the system. Right, okay, so the hoses are now connected to both brake levers. Both brake levers are working. They might just need a little bit of a bleed, so I shall do that in a little bit. And that is done at the top of these shifters. You pull the hood covers back from there we can get to the bleed nipples, uh, much in the same way as you've ever done on a mountain bike, etc. Um, I'll connect a syringe to the caliper, either at the front or the back, put a little basket on top of there, fill it with oil, push the fluid through from the caliper and hopefully expel any bubbles up through the hoses and out into the basket. That should work just a treat, you know, it should be no different to any other system you've ever bled. Uh, I have videos on bleeding Shimano mountain bike uh, brakes uh, and this setup is going to be the same. Right okay so the brake hoses are connected up to the shifters, the brakes have been bled and the calipers adjusted so there's no drag on the discs as you can see and hear likewise with the back. So next step is to get the chain connected up Okay, there are the quick links, and I do love a new chain. Okay, always make sure to remember to thread it through your front derailleur cage.
Okay, uh, for this next bit of joining the two ends of the chain together, what I like to do is take the rear derailleur like this, put a tie strap through somewhere, wherever you can get a bit of a connection on it, and then just strap it to the frame. Now what this actually does, it gives you some slack on the chain. Okay, you can see you can get a bit of slack there and you can easily bring the two ends together and then use your quick link to connect them. Now I have this tool that is used for spreading the links apart. Goes in there and squeeze and here the click, that link is locked. Just make sure that it is fully good, that's all good. Now we can just disconnect this tie strap and start thinking about adjusting um, all the gears. One of the first things we've got to do with the rear derailleur is to adjust the rear B screw. Now that adjusts where this guide jockey wheel here is in relation to the gears and at the moment it's far too close to the gears and doesn't clear the largest one or the smallest one and makes a bit of a mess on some of the others so you just adjust that screw there and that will let you pull your whole derailleur up like that so i'll get onto that i'm just lifting up the derailleur with my thumb and that takes the tension off the B screw and I'm just going to screw it in a bit. Right, so, and then just have a little pedal. So that's much better. Now we've got to sort out the fine tuning of the gears. Right, okay, so before I start fine tuning the gears, um, before I put the bike up on the bike stand and start fettling with that, really could do with putting some pedals on so I've got something to crank the crank around with. So, no further ado, let's get these old telegraph pedals on. So, as I'm sure you're fully aware, pedals are actually sided um, that's primarily because the threads are different on each side of the crank um, to ensure that pedals do not come undone as you're pedaling okay as you pedal you could potentially unwind the threads out so they are threaded accordingly shimano kindly put them in packets clearly indicating okay look this one here is a blue packet clearly labeled right that's the right pedal and left pedal okay so there really is no excuses for getting this wrong. Right, okay, so let's put this right hand pedal on. Obviously this is the right hand side. Takes an eight mil hex through there. So let's just offer it in, just see if we can get those threads to engage. And they started to have, and then we'll go through from the back there with the hex. And just nip it up like so okay that will doesn't need to be over torqued because the way it's if you pedal it just continuously attempts to tighten the threads up so that's that side now let's offer on the left hand pedal There we go, pedals are on. Right, okay, the bike is up in the stand, the pedals are on. Um, we can take care of adjusting all the gears. Now then, the instruction manual for the L2 group set is very comprehensive. It goes into great detail about how to set up your derailers, etc. Tells you how to do it manually. Um, you can also do it via an app as illustrated there, which I will do. 
Um, but yes, yeah, very comprehensive. Um, on one side, it's all in Chinese. On this side, it's in English. And you have QR codes there that take you to your relevant Play Store or Apple Store to uh, get your app on your phone. So anyway, without further ado, let's cut over to the app. Right, here we are. So this is the app. Um, I've already synced my group set to my app, so it's coming up there. That's the available uh, group set. So I click on that and it takes us into the uh, functions of that. So there you can see we can either look at the rear derailleur or the front derailleur or make adjustments to the shifters. So within the rear derailleur you can see I've set it to say it's a 12 speed because I'm using a 12 speed cassette and we can actually change gears from the app here as well as using the shifters. For the purpose of actually um, adjusting the gears what I've been doing is I've been pedaling hand cranking the pedals there and then fine tuning using uh, the app. So within each gear you can see there's an adjustment at the bottom and you can plus or minus the actual position of the derailleur within each gear and then you just go up through all the gears and fine tune each one until it's all running smoothly and then likewise you can do it on the front derailleur too. Okay, You can do fine increments, fine adjustments on the position of the derailleur in each respective gear. Okay, there's a whole multitude of other things we can do in this app. Uh, it tells you how many times you've shifted. So apparently I've shifted a thousand times already. You can do your software upgrades, etc, etc. Um, options for one touch shifting, gear protection, and then there's a setting there, continuous shift mode. So that's if you're holding the button on your shifter it will just adjust through the gears you don't have to continuously keep pressing and you can adjust the speed rate of that so I've currently got it set to minimum now I've had a little play around and so far I've got it running nice and smoothly up on the stand let me show you how it shifts right okay so for the purpose of this I'll be using the shifters actually on the handlebars as opposed to using the app because the app is on the phone and the phone is currently recording what I'm doing so I can't do both at the same time so anyway let's uh, start cranking this a bit and we'll be there in the let's say that's the middle gear that's gear seven and we're going to go up one at a time to the largest uh, cassette there go up all the way up that's currently running on the front large uh, chain ring and I can flip it down to the, the smallest one like so nice and easy and then we're going to go up to the large chain ring again so just one press button and look it's through and then we're going to come back down through the cassette uh, I've been pressing that very rapidly and now I'm going to go up hold it using the continuous option so I'm literally just pressing the button and holding it come back down one at a time go up continuously come down continuously Um, let's do some rapid button pressing. There you go, so you can get up there and let's come down quickly. So it's pretty rapid really. And it's all running lovely and smoothly. Let's use that front derailleur again. Down it goes. Up it goes. Down it goes. And up it goes. So overall, yeah, I'm pretty impressed with it. Um, until I actually get it on the ground and take it for a ride, um, won't know for sure, but certainly on the stand there, that's running pretty sweetly. So there she is, fully complete. Twelve speed at the back. L2 electric shifters. The elite carbon rims. Continental GP 5000s, Agra pedals, integrated handlebar stem, 
this breaks seat post turn the saddle SLR and then see bar tape yeah all that remains to be done is take it out for a serious ride right so here we are guys having fully built the bike now it's time to take it out for a bit of an installation ride a bit of a shakedown see where everything's just working as it should might need to adjust the gears a bit who knows um, yeah and give you a bit of a report back on what this bxt 145 aero frame with l2 group set electric group set is actually like so yeah Here we go. Oh, wow. Well, there you go. I just done um, just shy of 10 miles, and everything was pretty good. Um, had a little bit of an issue in uh, what would it be, gear five. So it just needs a little bit of fine tuning. Everything else is, is fine. Brakes are bedding in quite well already. Uh, I think I just need to adjust the headset. There's just a little bit of play in that, so that just needs tightening up seat post stayed good so the clamp there's working there was no movement in that in that at all um but yeah i mean that is an aero aero frame so it did catch the wind a little bit every now and again um maybe a tiny little bit more than my previous bike which was the r872 ribble which is not quite as slab sided as this um but all in all yeah pretty pleased with it so far so um get a few more miles under my belt and i'll report back a bit more Okay, so it's been a little while since the bike was completed and as you can see, I've been in the process of editing this vast video together. Um, so in conclusion, wrapping this whole thing up, there are three things that I need to address. There is the issue of the budget. Did I come in under budget? Did I build this bike for less than £1,800? Um, the other things are more to do with the bike itself. One issue is 12-speed. Shimano 12-speed cassettes, there seems to be an issue with them. I've actually done a separate video all about it, but I will give you a little brief synopsis of it in this little wrap up. And the other issue is the headset. Now in relation to the headset, I'm just gonna show you this bit of video. Right, so in order to address some of the sloppiness in the headset here, um, it just seems, seems to keep coming loose after a ride to get a little bit of play in there. So these are the bolts that go through the headset there. As you can see, it consists of a bolt and like a, effectively that's a nut. And what I'm finding is it will only go in, you can only tighten up so far before there's no further adjustment on that because the uh, bolt bottoms out inside the nut. So you can't effectively squeeze that together quite tight enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shorten these bolts just going to trim off a bit of the end and then clean the threads up and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bolt into my die like so all the way on then grind some of the end off and then I can back off the screw bolt out of the die and it will perfectly re-cut the threads at the end that I've cut off so that should enable me then to do these up a bit tighter and clamp that tighter and hopefully that will alleviate um, the play that keeps returning there so i'm going to get on with that now right okay you can see i've reduced the length of the bolt on this one here and i've taken about 2.5 mil off of it compared to that one so i'm going to try with that one first make sure it still fits on the headset all right and then get this one shortened as well Right, okay, there's both of them done now, so we can get them back on the bike. Right, okay, so the bolts are back in there loosely. Let's just get this bolt back in here. This is what actually applies the preload to the whole headset. Making sure all my spacers are interlocked properly with the headset. It's just a bit too tight at the moment. Yeah, 
Yeah, so that feels about right. So let's get it all lined up. And now we can do up these incrementally to clamp the stem around the steerer tube. So the player's gone. Right, yeah, it's just a question of seeing whether that stays uh, slot free after a decent ride. So in reference to the Shimano 12 speed cassette that I'm running on this bike, which is an Ultegra cassette, um, I did find an issue with it and I'm gonna play a little bit of video footage on here, which is a brief snapshot of the video that I've put out. And it will give you a, a little understanding of how I've resolved this issue. So let me just play this. Okay, so here you can see the cassette and the chain, and you can see the chain is snagging, and it's snagging whilst on gear five. It's between gears four, five, and six. Now, I've traced this down to the fact that on the back of the cassette, there is this shim. Now, if this shim is on your cassette absolutely perfectly square and true to the hole in the middle, the cassette runs fine. But if not, it can cause that part of the cassette, which is like the main block of it, to run that thing. And you can remove that shim and that's what I did. I removed that shim and then I placed that shim back between gears five and six and redid it all back together and it runs perfectly sweetly. So for this tiny little shim, it causes no end of problems in gear five. So anyway, you can check this link up here to the full video that I've done in relation to Shimano 12 speed and it might resolve similar issues that you are having as well. Now then, let's get down to the real nitty gritty. Did I manage to come in on budget, over budget, under budget? Right, so I will start by saying I have got the bike I wanted. It has got everything that I set out to achieve. Okay, it's aero, it's carbon, fully integrated, super clean looking, hydraulic brakes, electronic gear shifting, etc., etc. Weight wise, it's coming bang on eight kilos, okay, which is pretty respectable. It's a little bit heavier than my previous bike, but 12 speed is heavier, fact, okay? I mean, I'm running a 34 tooth cassette at the back. It's a beast, it's a big lump of a thing. I only had a 28 tooth on the on the Rivel. So, you know, you, you, and the fact I'm also running 52 chain ring at the front, so a 52 chain ring is bigger than a 50 tooth chain ring. So again, more material, more weight. So to come in at eight kilos, I'm pretty pleased. Now, when I quote you the price, the final cost of this bike, I'm including everything. And now when I mean everything, I mean the little rubber grommets that I had to buy, the DI2 rubber grommets. I also included that tool that I purchased, which was for doing the hydraulic brake lines. It includes, oh, it includes 58 pounds extra shipping to the uh, retailer on AliExpress, um, which was express shipping and they guaranteed no import duty on the frame. And that was true, but that was 58 quid on its own. And I should also say that um, everything got delivered. I paid import duty at source on relevant bits when ordering off AliExpress online, because that's the way the system is now. Sometimes it applies import duty at source. Other times it's down to customs. Now, what customs you get charged, it's, it's down to the territory you're in and uh, the whims of the, the customs people on the day that your package comes through customs. So I've paid what I've paid, that's it, okay? So anyway, final budget is 1,000. Six hundred and fifty-three pounds and ninety-two p. Not bad at all. Can you imagine what this bike would have cost me if I'd have bought it from a shop here in the UK off the peg, so to speak? Now, what I would say is, building a bike like I have is not not straightforward. There are issues you have to get over. For instance. I mean, I had to get over the issue of the battery, where to put the battery. The battery did not fit in the seat post tube. I've had to find another place to put it, okay? Um, the 12 speed cassette issue, you know, if I'd have paid top dollar to a shop, that bike would have gone straight back. It would have gone back and it would have been like, you would either fix it or you give me my money back, okay? 
Um, when you're building your own bike, there are no warranties. Really, you know, you're on your own. You have to deal with these issues yourself. During the build, there are little things you have to come uh, resolve. You know, so you know some people just don't don't want to be doing that. Um, so I would stress to you, if you're going to do your own bike build, you have got to be prepared to get properly involved yourself. But look, huge, massive savings to be had. Um, so there you go. Bike is built. I've got the bike I wanted, and I've got it built for the money I wanted, plus a little bit of change left in my pocket. So that's got to be a result, right? So yeah, there you go. Um, hopefully the bike will prove to be durable. Um, time will tell on that one. If I have any issues, um, I'll give you some feedback. If you have any questions about, uh, in particular, the L2 electronic group set, please be sure to uh, put some comments online. So far, so good. Um, am I entirely sold on electronic shifting? Do I really, really need it? Probably not. The old Tegra 11 speed I had on my previous bike was absolutely mint. Okay, you just knew, bang, it changed. Likewise, yeah, the electronic shifter does that as well. But the cable one done it, so what's the difference really? Um, but undeniably, it gives you a very clean looking bike. Um, one of the other little things I would say about electronic group set, some people worry about the battery. Um, what would happen if the battery runs flat? Well, I've not had that issue. The thing, um, batteries, the batteries last really well. So um, the app tells you what the battery status is. Um, yeah, it's something you have to be conscious of, but it's not something you need to worry about at all. So anyway, there you go. Thank you for, for enduring this epic video of mine. Um, please be sure to uh, give me a thumbs up on this one, please, because it has been a task. And um, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, thank you very much, and I shall see you again very soon. Oh, be sure to check out some of my other videos. Cheers. Bye-bye.